What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to open three envelopes from the intro screen. You've already figured out this is a theme video. I actually opened one of the envelopes already because I wasn't sure who it was, but the other two, one had a return address and the other one I had a postmark on it so I knew who it was. So this is going to all be Kansas City Athletic Returns. Now the gentlemen didn't play their entire careers with Kansas City, but that's the common theme of this video. So the first one that I already have opened is former Baltimore Oriole. Russ Snyder on one, two, and there he is as a Kansas City A, which makes three, and four. So Russ Snyder, we'll talk a little bit about him. Snyder from Oklahoma, batted left and threw right as an outfielder was really more known for his defensive abilities than his offensive abilities in the major leagues. He spent 1953 all the way till 1959 playing in the minor leagues. Originally, he was with the New York Yankees organization. So you can understand being an outfielder in the Yankees, trying to crack their lineup, pretty tough to do. So as many Yankee prospects learned, they were often shipped off to Kansas City in return for other players. So Snyder was traded by the Yankees to the A's for Mike Baxis and Bob Martin, which I don't know either of those players. Well, that trade allowed him some time to get things together in AAA for the, A, uh, for the A's, but he also got to be called up to the majors in that 1959 season, making his Major League debut. Well, he played two seasons with the A's, and he had, you know, he had average numbers, to say it nicely. You know, they weren't horrible. They weren't bad. I mean, he batted over 300 his first year there, batted 260 the next year. But the A's decided they didn't want to pay his contract, I suppose, and they shipped him to the Baltimore Orioles. Well, he spent 1961 all the way till 1967 with the Orioles, and they had some very respective years, batting 292, 305, 290, 306. Now, in that same breath, he also batted 236, 256, and 270. So it was kind of an up and down roller coaster with him trying to figure out what he was going to do for for year from year to year. Not real consistent would be the best way to put it. So after the 67 season, he was traded to the Chicago White Sox where he only spent one year. And after that year with the White Sox, he was then traded to the Cleveland Indians where he spent the 68 and 69 season. Well, after the 68 and 69 season, he then was with the Milwaukee Brewers for one last hurrah after he was traded there. However, in March of the following year, he was released at the age of 36. So after his retirement, he returned home to his native Nebraska, where he worked in soil conservation, which I don't know if that means for the state of Nebraska or what, or maybe the federal government, not really sure. And that's what he did until his retirement. So thank you, Mr. Snyder. I really appreciate adding your autograph to the collection. All right, so this next one has a return address on it, so I will simply, I'm not going to show that on here, but I know who it is. And that is former Kansas City A, Wayne Causey on one, two as an A. Same picture, I think. What do you guys think? Same picture? Got the two red people there. <laughs> People in the dugout doing the same thing. I'd say that's a candidate for the same picture. Real original there, Tops. And here is him as a Brave. And this is a unique one as a Tops embossed. It's really beat up, 
but I thought, what the heck, I'll throw it in the envelope, see if he signs it. Causey is one of those rare players, guys. He went straight from high school to the major leagues. That is unheard of, especially in today's game. But he is one of those players that was deemed that good that he went straight to the majors from high school. And that wasn't really common back then. You know, usually you spent some time in the minors before you hit the majors. Now, I'm not saying he didn't spend time in the minors. I'm just saying that he went straight from high school to the majors, then went back to the minors. So at 18 years young, he appeared in 68 games for the Baltimore Orioles playing shortstop. He only batted 194 that season and followed up the next year with a 170 batting average. Well, in 1957, the Orioles decided to send him down to the minor leagues where he played in triple A, or double A, excuse me, for mostly the entire season with 14 games in the majors. Well, he spent the next three years playing in the Orioles minor league system when he was 21, 22, and 23. So at 18 and 19, he was up. I'm guessing primarily used as a defensive replacement because obviously batting 170 and 194, they didn't ask him to hit too much, that's for sure. Then after the 1960 season, the Baltimore Orioles traded him to the Kansas City A's. Well, the Kansas City A's, as we know, were pretty futile during that era before their move to Oakland. And he was mainly the primary shortstop for the A's from 1961 all the way till 1965. Until 1966 when they traded him again to the Chicago White Sox. Well, he spent three seasons with the White Sox playing part-time. You know, I guess in 67, 124 games. That's more part-time. And then the White Sox traded him to the California Angels. Well, he was very short-lived with the California Angels because the Atlanta Braves decided to purchase his contract from the Angels. The year at the Braves, actually, in 1968, was his final year. Uh, it says on his Wikipedia page that while he was playing, he was actually pursuing his degree and got a degree in accounting. So I would assume after the 1968 season, which is what he probably did until his retirement. So, very happy to add Mr. Causey to my collection. Very happy to get that, as I'd never gotten him before. Before shooting this video and doing the research, I was completely unaware he was one of the players that went straight to the major leagues after signing his contract. So that's pretty neat. Alright, so this final one. Uh, okay. Is former Kansas City A, Oakland A as well. Diego Segui on one, two, one, oh, I don't quite have that on camera, do I? Two, one is a Red Sox, and my favorite set, one is a Seattle Pilot. So Diego Segui, Diego Segui, a Cuban-born player, one of the very first Cuban players, I don't want to say very first, but one of a handful of Cuban players to play in the major leagues during that era. Sagi was a good pitcher that played on some bad teams. And the Kansas City A's we've talked about, about their futility, I guess would be the best way to put it. But he actually had a two stints with the A's organization, believe it or not. Originally, he started out with the A's uh, at 24 years old. After spending three years in the minors with the A's, he was called up to the majors and appeared in 37 games as a starter and reliever. He would pitch for the A's for one, two, three, four, five seasons in Kansas City, make that six, and in one season he actually led the league in losses with uh, 17 losses where he followed it up with 15 the next year. In 1966, he played one year with Washington, then he went back to Kansas City for a season, where he followed them to Oakland. However, the Seattle Pilots drafted him in the expansion draft. 
So after spending a season with the Pilots, then changed to the Brewers, the Brewers traded him back to Oakland. So this is his third stint now with the o Oakland A's, or the Kansas City A's, where he spent the 1969 or 1970 and 71 season and part of 72 before the Cardinals got him from the Oakland A's. He pitched two seasons with the Cardinals, had some really good years with them actually, 3 and 1 with a 3 ERA and 7 and 6 with a 2.78 ERA before the Cardinals traded him to the Boston Red Sox, which is indicated up here on that card. So he spent a couple seasons with Boston, and then they released him. Well, he signed a free agent deal with the San Diego Padres in 1976, and then he was traded to the Seattle Mariners, where he finished his career. So in closing, Kansas City A's, thank you, Mr. Causey, for signing for me, and thank you, Mr. Snyder, for signing for me as well. I really appreciate adding all your autographs to my collection. Uh, I should also mention that da uh, David Segui is the son of Diego Segui. So if you're a father-son collector, you can write David, who signs for the mail, or his father, Diego, who are still very good signers. So thanks for watching, and I look forward to your comments below.